Good evening. This is Sergeant X. I don't think we need a Gallup poll to tell us that nearly everybody's in favor of a good mystery story. <laughs> There's enough would-be Sherlock Holmes in most of us so that we get a kick out of attempting to solve a crime, even if it's only on the radio. So get out those magnifying glasses and Meerschaum pipes for tonight's adventure in the Mystery Playhouse. Tonight, the Mystery Playhouse gives you amateur sleuths a chance to exercise your talents. We invite you to match wits with the author of tonight's story, Earl Der Biggers, creator of the Charlie Chan series, and see if you can solve his mystery before the solution is finally given. You will be presented with a murder and five likely suspects. And if you catch the various clues as they come, you'll be able to put your finger on the murderer before the curtain falls. And here is a hint to the most important clue of all. It's contained in the title of tonight's tale, Fifty Candles. Good hunting. My name is George Winthrop. I'll never forget that horrible night I stood alone in the library of my former employer, Henry Drew. It was a stern and foreboding room. The heavy yellow fog from the fields of marsh grass seemed to be pressing close against the window panes. I'd been invited to Henry Drew's birthday party. Inside the big house, it was oppressively quiet. And then suddenly... I ran the door of the dining room. The table was set with gleaming silver and white linen. The center stood a cake with 50 pink candles. I took a few steps across the room and stopped, horrified. There was a body on the floor. But let's go back to the events that led up to my shocking discovery. Four years ago, Henry Drew, the San Francisco millionaire, had hired me to take charge of a copper mine in China. The mine had been a failure, and Drew promised that if I could make it pay, he'd reward me with a third interest in the property. Well, after four long, hard, and successful years in Yunnan, I returned to Shanghai to see Henry Drew. Yes, Winthrop, you've done a splendid job, and I'm proud of you. Well, thank you, sir. It, it was a tough job. I, I think I really earned my third interest in that property. What? A third interest? Well, y yes, sir, you remember. You said if I could make the mine pay, you'd give me, in addition to my salary, a third interest in the property. Well, you must be dreaming, boy. That's ridiculous. I never made any such promise, and you know it. But, but you, you gave me a word. Well, uh, I assume if you have a witness. Of course not, but I fulfill my end of the bargain. I demand that you keep yours. Oh? Then I'll accept it. Accept what? Your resignation. Oh, oh so that's it. Well, you won't get away with it. I'm going to... Oh, am I interrupting something? Not at all. Come in, Carlotta. Have you finished your business? Yes, my dear. We're quite through. Through? I, I... Mr. Winthrop, I suppose you'll be glad to get back to the States. Yes. Yes, Mrs. Drew. Good day, Mr. Drew. I'll see you in court. I was young and ambitious. And this act of injustice seared my mind with hatred for Henry Drew. Well, I... I booked passage as soon as I could to San Francisco. The boat was crowded, and I was informed that I'd have to share a stateroom with the ship's doctor and another male passenger. When I went on board and down to my stateroom, I found that already... Make yourself comfortable, Mr. Winthrop. Oh, thank you, Dr. Parker. There'll be another gentleman in here, they tell me. Oh, I'll put my bags in here, Hung. Yes, Mr. Drew. Oh, hello, Doctor. Huh? Winthrop, what are you doing here? Uh, these happen to be my quarters, Mr. Drew. Well, in that case, I'll have mine changed immediately. Come along, Hung. Yes, Mr. Drew. <laughs> what a character, Dr. Parker. A famous Henry Drew who made his millions swindling other people. Well, you'll have to admit he has good taste in women. Mrs. Drew is quite attractive. Oh, sure, sure. But he's old enough to be her father. Who's the young American girl that Drew hired as traveling companion for Mrs. Drew? Oh, she's uh, Mary Telfair. Oh, 
You must be interested. Well, I am, but so far it's all on my side. <laughs> Excuse, please. Missy Drew would like Dr. Parker come to Drew's stateroom right away. Oh, yes, yes. I'll be right along, honey. Thank you, Doc. You know, it's an odd thing about his relation to Drew. It's more of a, a slave than a servant. Slave? Yeah. About 20 years ago, Henry Drew saved his life. And for that, Hung pledged Drew 20 years' servitude. Old Drew really exercised his rights as a master, too. Once he even prevented Hung from marrying a Chinese girl that he fancied. Later, the girl married old Dr. Sue. Well, I imagine Hung will be very happy when his 20 years of slavery end, that he can do as he pleases. In any event, better luck with your romance. Yes, Mary, it's, it's really been very funny. Old man Drew couldn't get another stateroom, see? So <laughs> he's had to make the best of an uncomfortable situation, bunking with me. <laughs> I can imagine. But he's really been very nice to me. Well, who wouldn't be nice to you? George, look down there on deck. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Dr. Park and Mrs. Drew, huh? Yeah, they're going into Drew's stateroom. I wish I had her clothes. And her money. Yes, I think the good doctor has more than a professional interest in Mrs. Drew. Yes, I gave Mr. Drew a sedative, and he's sleeping quite soundly. The old fossil. It would be too bad if he didn't wake up. Couldn't you arrange matters, doctor? No, Carlotta, that would be too obvious. I think we'll just have to be patient and let nature take her course. <laughs> Uh-oh, here comes Hunt. Excuse, please, Mrs. Drew. Mr. Drew asked me to tell you he would have dinner at 8 o'clock. Very well, I'll be ready. Thank you. I told Mr. Drew. He knows more about Henry's personal affairs than I do. Well, what about Drew's son, Mark? Has he made up with his father? I remember they quarreled years ago. No, he's a lawyer and he has no use for me. He thinks I married Henry for his money. And just between ourselves, Doctor, I think he was right. <laughs> We arrived in San Francisco three days later. And then came the surprise. Old Henry Drew was giving a party at his home. It was to be a birthday party, he said. In spite of the bad blood between us, he insisted that I come. But the most important reason for accepting the invitation was, well, the thought of seeing Mary again. Hung Ching Chung called for me later, and we drove to the Drew Mansion on Knob Hill. The fog was thick, hung like a black. Oh, I'm delighted to see you, Winthrop. Take that chair for the fire. Thank you. I've been thinking over our little business discussion. Uh, please, Mr. Drew, let's not spoil your party with business. My lawyer will call on you tomorrow. All right, boy. Evening, gentlemen. Oh, hello, oh. Mary. You look beautiful. <laughs> Pretty as a picture, Mary. Well, thank you, kind sir. <laughs> Excuse it, please, Mr. Drew. Um, yes, well, what is it, Hung? With your permission, I will go to my room. All right, Hung. But be back in time to serve dinner. Yes, Mr. Drew. Thank you. I don't imagine you two will object to being left alone for a moment. I want to have a look at the table. I want to be sure all 50 candles are on the cake. Excuse me. I wonder whose birthday we're celebrating. Search me. He said 50 candles. That lets him out. He must be well over 60. Yes. His son Mark is coming, but his young men will under 50. Well, oh, perhaps it's it's for Drew's partner, Dr. Su Yen Hun. Mary. Oh, Mary. Oh, you come here. Now, what does she want? I'll be right back. It was then it happened. And everyone was upstairs but myself. I was standing alone in the Drew Library. It was oppressively quiet. Suddenly I heard... I ran to the door of the dining room. A French window stood open to the fog. I took a few steps across the room. The table was set with gleaming silver and white linen. In the center stood a cake with 50 pink candles. Another step and I stopped. Horrified. Henry Drew was on the floor with a knife in his chest. Mr. Drew. Mr. Drew. There's the candles. Mr. Drew. Oh, my God. He's dead. I was shocked horrified as I stood there in the Drew dining room with Henry Drew's dead body at my feet. I stepped quickly to the open French window and saw a dark shadow across the lawn which disappeared in the twinkling of an eye. I heard running footsteps on the gravel path outside. 
Without thinking of the danger or consequences, I stepped out on the veranda, stumbled down the stairs, and tried to follow along the path. And then suddenly... Hey, look out. Good Lord, Winthrop. Oh, Dr. Parker, am I glad to see you. Well, what in the world are you doing out here? Something terrible has happened. Well, what is it? I, I, I... Speak up, man. Henry Drew has just been murdered. We returned to the Drew house, and I met Mark Drew, Henry Drew's son, for the first time. A good-looking, brisk young man of 35. He had been detained and arrived at the party just a few minutes before I found his father dead. A few minutes later, Detective Sergeant Barnes arrived. He was a cool, quick little man and all business from the word go. After a brief investigation in the house and outside, he ordered us to the library. All right. Quiet, everybody. I have here the place cards of the guests for this birthday party. Mr. and Mrs. Drew, Miss Telfair, Mr. Winthrop... Dr. Parker, Mark Drew, and Dr. Su Yun Hun. Oh, Mr. Drew. Oh, yes, yes, sir. Dr. Su Yun Hun lives a few doors down the block, doesn't he? Uh, yes, he does. He's the only guest who hasn't arrived. I wonder if you'd mind sending one of the servants to his house and ask him to come over here. Of course, Sergeant. I'll be glad. Now, we'll start with you, Mr. Windsor. What happened? Well, uh, I-, I was standing in here alone when suddenly I heard somebody cry out. I ran into the dining room and saw Mr. Drew on the floor. He was dead. Did you see a knife or any other weapon? I didn't look for one. I heard footsteps outside on the path, and I went through the open French window and tried to follow him. Then I I got lost in the fog and bumped into Dr. Parker. He came in, and that's about all. What's your position here? A friend of Henry Drew? Decidedly not. I was a former employee. Decidedly not? What do you mean by that? Sergeant, may I speak? Why, uh, yes, Mrs. Drew. Mr. Winthrop was employed by my husband in the Yunnan mine in China. Mr. Winthrop claimed that my husband had promised to reward him with a third interest in the mine he managed. Well, that's true. He did. He claimed he'd been treated unfairly and quarreled violently with my husband, who dismissed him. Well, that's not true. I resigned. But you admit there had been bad blood between you and Drew. Well, yeah, yes, I do. Mrs. Drew, what were you doing at half past seven? I was in my room. Miss Telfair was helping me to dress when we heard the cry. What then? Miss Telfair started out of my room. I tried to leave, but you held me back. Naturally, I was frightened. Dr. Sue should be here shortly, Sergeant. Good. Uh, where were you, Mark, when your father was murdered? I? I, I was on my way here in a cab. Well, I'll check that later with the driver. But for the time being, I'll assume that clears you. Well, you certainly don't suspect me. I suspect everyone until he's proven innocent. Uh, who's that? Oh, uh, that's Hung Chin Chung, my father's servant. I see. Come here. Yes, Mr. Officer. Oh, Sergeant. I'd, uh... I'd like to put in a word for Hong. You see, he's been in my father's service for 20 years. I'm sure he's the sincerest mourner here tonight. It's good to have such honor in the eyes of my master's son. Tell me, Hong, where were you at 7.30? In my room on the fourth floor. My master gave me permission to go there. Mr. Winthrop, hear that? Yes, yes, that's right. Did you hear the cry? No. When I came downstairs, I found my master was dead. All right, Al. Uh, suppose you go out and fix us some coffee. Yes. Now, Miss Telfair. Yes. What about you? When I heard Mr. Drew scream, I ran downstairs. I looked in the dining room. Yes? And saw Mr. Drew. Yes, I, go on. I screamed and ran from the room. Did you see a weapon of any sort? A knife? I scarcely looked. I was frightened. Then Mrs. Drew rushed in, and when she saw the body, she almost fainted. I went upstairs and got some smelling salts. Came down here. When you took the time to get the smelling salts for Mrs. Drew, you went to your own room first, didn't you? Yes. You wanted to hide something you'd picked up from the side of the dead man in the dining room. Uh, well, Under your mattress was a pretty obvious place to hide this jade-handled yes. Chinese knife. Well, yes, but... So, I, I know it was the worst thing I could have done, but I was so excited I didn't think. Mary, you did that for me. Oh, you're wonderful. Then this is your knife, Mr. Winthrop. Oh, yeah, 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 yes, that's my knife. How do you account for the fact that it was found beside the body? Well, it, it was stolen from me, of course. Oh, of course. Well, it, it, it must have been taken from my luggage in the stateroom on the boat. There were just three men who had access to that luggage. One was a dead man, the second was Hung Chen. And the third? Dr. Parker. Nonsense. What motive would I have? Motive enough. A secret love affair with my father's wife that's been going on for more than a year. Lust for money and a well-known lack of scruples, my dear doctor. I tell you, I didn't steal Winthrop's knife. Why not? A man who would steal another man's wife would hardly stop with the theft of a dagger. Never mind, Mark. I'll take that. 
Hello. No, this is Detective Sergeant Barnes. What? When? Yes. Yes, I see. Well, very well. Just don't touch a thing until the police arrive. Oh, what is it, Sergeant? Is, is something wrong? Plenty. That was the servant you sent for Dr. Su Yan Hun. Well, is the doctor coming? I'm afraid not. Dr. Su Yan Hun has been stabbed to death. Obviously could not have committed Captain Parker. You weren't with me when Drew was killed. But, but are you implying... That... I'm implying nothing. For the last time, may I point out that everyone in this house is under suspicion until this murder is solved. Everyone? But, but I was upstairs and my husband was stabbed. And so was Miss Telfair and Hung Chin. So what? Any one of the three of you could have gone down the back steps, out the back door, through the garden... Entered the French doors, killed Henry Drew, and then returned the same way without being seen. One moment, Sergeant. May I say a word? Yes, of course, Mark. Well, it occurs to me there's one important link in this mystery that hasn't been explained. The 50 birthday candles. 50 birthday candles? Yes. Whose birthday is this anyway? Father was 69, Dr. Sue was over 70. L- look, may I speak to you privately? Well, all right, come along. Mary, uh, I didn't kill Henry Drew. You, you believe that, don't you? Yes, John. Oh, and that's all that matters. No matter how this evening ends, it's, it's taught me one wonderful thing. That you love me. All right, everybody. I have an important announcement. My investigation is at an end. You're all free to go now, except George Winthrop. Oh, hey, no, 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 no. Of course, you will be called later as witnesses. Sergeant, you don't mean that... No, it isn't true. I'm afraid it is, Mary. George Winthrop... I arrest you for the murder of Henry Drew. I, I dropped into a chair beside Mary, too, too shocked and stunned to speak. And then strange things began to happen. All the guests left except Mary and myself. Sergeant and Mark Drew went into the next room and appeared to be consulting together. When they came out, Sergeant Barnes warned us to be quiet and turned out the lights. He stamped around the hall and opened and closed the doors. Then everything was quiet. The four of us, Mark, Mary, the sergeant, and I, sat there in the darkness. Minutes passed like hours. What did Sergeant Barnes have in mind? It was so quiet, I I could hear the clock ticking. Now, Mark... Anyone attempting to leave or enter the house would have to pass through this hallway, right? That's right. Good. Now, you better slip out. Take your place in front of the house now. Right, Sergeant. Good luck. Sergeant, I I tell you, I... Three, quiet, you fool. You ruin everything. Sergeant, are you... That is, uh, are we waiting? Waiting? Yes. You mean... If you both will be quiet and listen and wait, you'll see what I mean. a word. George, he has something in his hand. Oh, no, you don't. (laughs) That takes care of that. What happened? Who is it? The murderer. Who else? You said that George... No, no, not George. Turn on the light, Mary, and you'll Uh, see. The light, yes. Never mind, I have it. Good Lord. It's Hong Jin Chung. Is he dead? No. Look, he's coming, too. You were right, Sergeant. Oh, Mark. I caught Marley, the Chinese girl, outside in the car. Your men are holding her. A Chinese girl? Who's Marley? Marley is the wife of Dr. Su Yen Hun. She killed Dr. Su? No. Hung committed both murders. But the two of them planned to run away together. That's why Hung had the suitcase with him. Well, that, then you mean you, you don't think that... No, no. Sorry to give you such a bad time of it, George. But we had to in order to trap the real murderer. Well, I... You see, everyone thought Hung was in his room when Henry Drew was killed. But it was very simple for him to go down the back stairs, go over to Dr. Sue's, murder him, come back here and murder Henry Drew, and then return to his room again. The killings were simplified because both men trusted Hung and probably had no warning. Of course, 
It was the clue about the 50 candles. Oh. Oh. Conscious now. Help him up, George. Right. Come on. All right, Hung. What have you got to say for yourself? Let me speak to him, Sergeant. I'm sorry, Hung. I always thought you were loyal to my father. Long ago, he saved your life. Hung Lulu. In return, you swore an oath to serve him for 20 years. Today, you are to be a free man. Yes. That is so. Those 50 candles on the cake were for you. This is your 50th birthday. Yes. So that's why old Drew said 50 candles before he died. He was trying to indicate the murderer. All right, Hung. You and the Chinese girl... Let the woman alone. She did nothing. She was only waiting for me. Well, then what connection did she have? Oh, you, I tell nothing. The wizard drew everything. All this was to be. Long ago, the gods arranged it. And who is man that he should struggle against the gods? Years ago, I wanted to marry Mali. I asked permission of your father, but he would not share my services with Mali. He took me on a long voyage, and when we returned, Mali had been given to the evil Dr. Suyan Hon. They hated the doctor, Mr. Drew, for that. I swore that when I was free, I would kill them. Today, I kept my oath. Do not grieve, Mark Drew. It is the decree of the gods. But now, gentlemen, by your leave... Look out, he has a knife! Oh, 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 that gentleman! No! Sergeant, is he... I'm afraid so. He's done a good job. This is horrible. Poor Hung. You might think it's strange, but my father never meant much to me. Yet Hung, well, he, he was my friend for as long back as, as I can remember. If I had only known earlier what the 50 candles meant, this might have been prevented. Yes, Mark. If. <laughs> That's the curtain on tonight's mystery, 50 Candles. How did you do? Were you able to outsmart the author and put the finger on the murderer? <laughs> or did you just jump from one suspect to the other, finally drawing a blank? Well, if you got it right, congratulations. If not, well, better luck next time. Say, before you put those detective tools away, follow me to the green room and see if you can't pick up a clue or two about our next performance in the Mystery Playhouse. Follow me, please. Come. I'm alone now. The last of the funeral guests have gone, and I am alone in my study. There has been a queer sense of freedom in the house since the coffin was carried away. The coffin that now lies hidden in its solitary grave beneath the brown earth. Claire is dead. She was my wife. And yet, I feel no sorrow. Little wonder. It was I who murdered her. Yes, I murdered her. But it was done too cleverly for anyone to suspect me. The power of mind over matter. Now that I look back on it, I marvel. Less than a month ago, she was strong and healthy. Then I began working on her. Working on her ignorant fears. Convincing her that she wasn't well. I could almost see the seeds taking root. Her appetite left her and she began to complain of stomach pains. She took to bed. The doctor, stupid fool, could find nothing wrong. But it was clear he was worried. I waited patiently, letting her tortured mind ravish her body. And then one evening, I walked into her bedroom. 
there was a cup of broth on her night table. In the half darkness, I dropped the white powder into the broth. Five grains of arsenic. An hour later, she was dead. Now the worst of it is over. The long night when she lay cold and still in her room adjoining mine. The funeral. The tearful platitudes of our friends. The weeping and wailing. Over. Done and gone with. The money is mine to do with as I please. No longer will it be doled out to me at her whim and pleasure. All mine. I shall close the house. No one will question that the memories of familiar things are too keen to bear. But first I must discharge the cook and the housemaid. Immediately. Come in. You wanted to see me, Mr. Goddard? Oh, yes, Hannah. Come in and close the door, please. Yes, sir. Uh, what's that you're carrying? It's a picture of the madam. I found it in the attic and I polished the silver frame. I thought you'd like to have it, sir, to remind you. Oh, yes, of course. Well, thank you, Hannah. It's a very good likeness. That is, until she was taken ill. I never saw anyone change so fast. Well, it's the nature of her disease, Hannah. Somehow I can't believe she's gone. Every now and then I have a queer feeling that she's still here. Well, you're just upset. I have a feeling she wants to tell me something. Uh, Hannah, please. I didn't mean to talk about it, but I keep listening for a voice. Waiting to hear what she wants to tell me. When they took her out of her bedroom, I wouldn't let Millie straighten up. I wanted to do it myself. And there, on the night table, was the last thing I brought her. A cup of broth. She drunk part of it, but... Hannah, then... I'd rather not discuss it. I'm sorry. I shouldn't really go on like this. Not after what you've been through. Waiting on her hand and foot. I wondered... Why you didn't hire a nurse those last weeks? Well, I preferred to do it myself. I was afraid a nurse would have alarmed Mrs. Goddard. Yes, and they're always prying into what doesn't concern them, aren't they? They think they know more than doctors do. Of course, some doctors don't know much at that. Mrs. Goddard couldn't have had a better doctor. And nobody could have done more for her than you did, sir, I'm sure. There are few husbands who have done what you did. Very few. You wanted to speak with me about something, sir? Uh, it's uh, not important, Hannah. It can wait for another time. For long minutes after the door had closed behind her, I could feel my heart pounding madly. The palms of my hands were cold and damp. Everything had changed. The feeling of well-being and satisfaction was gone, and in its place was nervous, uncertain fear. Why had she made it a point to mention the cup of broth? And what else had she said? Oh, yes. Few husbands would have done more for their wives. More than I did. Very few. The words had double meaning. Had she meant them that way? No, it was impossible. Just a coincidence. A ghastly turn of a phrase. There was nothing to worry about. Nothing. Well, it doesn't look like you'll have much detective work to do in this one. The murderer's already told us who he is. Sounds to me like our next production is going to be one of those psychological stories going all out for terror. No, sir. I don't think there's going to be anything light and airy about our next attraction. So, if you like them grim and frightening... Be right back in your seats when we raise the curtain on the web. This is Sergeant X closing the doors of the Mystery Playhouse. Good night. Sleep tight.
This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.